So we've seen the principle of the methods of moments estimator, where we have a set of equations, empirical moment equations, that we solve for the parameters. And so far, we've only seen situations where there are an equal number of equations as there are parameters. In the example of the methods of moments estimation for the mean, we had one parameter and one equation. And in the regression context, we had k equations for k parameters, one equation for each regression coefficient. In general, however, there are many contexts where we have more equations than parameters. Uh, for example, in the green textbook, there's an illustration of the estimation of the parameters of a gamma distribution, where you can have four moment equations, but there are only two parameters. So the question then is, how do we go about it? Do we pick any two? And the, of course, the question is, which two? Or do we somehow try to consolidate all this information together? And so that's the approach taken in the generalized methods of moments. So in general, we can write the moment conditions, and this is very abstract and very general, as a number of equations in expected value, the equations being functions h, very general functions, of all the possible variables and error terms. These are contained in v sub i, and the parameter vector theta. The, the sub zero is sometimes put in to show that this is the true population value. So we have a set of equations that um, are equal to zero in expected value and contain all the observable variables, the unobservable error terms, and the parameters. And as before, we replace these theoretical expected value conditions by uh, moment conditions in averages, expressed as averages. So we move from the expected value operator, the E in the equation above, to 1 over n times the sum of the value for these equations for each observation. So these averages are set to 0, and we have to solve this for the parameters. As I mentioned, when we have more equations than parameters, we really don't have a good way to deal with this. Um, expect an arbitrary selection of, say, k equations out of the L that we have. However, a compromise is, uh, if we think of this as an, an objective function, where we try to get all the equations as close as possible to zero. So if we take two equations out of the four, say, in the gamma example, then these two equations will be exactly zero, but the two other ones will not be zero. And so how do we kind of spread the loss over all equations by weighting them? And in general, we have a what is called a weighting matrix. This is not to be confused with the spatial weights matrix that we've been encountering. But there is a weighting matrix that gives different weights to each of these um, equations. Of course, the simplest solution is to give equal weight to all of them. In that case, the matrix W, the weighting matrix, is an identity matrix, I. And the criterion for optimization becomes to find the values for the parameters, the arguments, so to speak, that minimize the sum of squares. So in general, uh, we have the W matrix in, in the middle as a weighting matrix, but for the special case that we give equal weight to each equation, this would be argmin 1 over m of the average of the h equations over all the observations in as a sum of square. So we minimize the sum of square deviations from zero, so to speak, for all the equations. And the um, weighting matrix has the dimension of the number of moment conditions. So um, in our notation, we've used k for the number of parameters, and we use l for the number of moment equations or moment conditions. So 
in general then a generalized moment methods of moments method of moments estimator or GMM estimator is a weighted minimization of uh, of a weighted sum of squares that is minimized with respect to the parameter values and the reason for this minimization is that we cannot satisfy all the equations exactly so rather than picking a few and ignoring the others we try to get all of them as close as possible to zero in a least square type of sense okay uh, this is a very complex topic and with a very interesting and complex literature and I, I'm not going to go into too much detail but just give you some very general um, properties which you will recognize when you go to the actual literature and for example when you go to the papers by Collegian and Prucha on and Lee on um, GMM estimation for spatial models. So the um, objective function is a weighted least square criterion which we solve for the parameters typically as we did for maximum likelihood we use the first order conditions and solve them. Then it can be shown that um, the GMM estimator is consistent so it goes to the true parameter value theta sub zero, theta naught and it has an asymptotic um, normal distribution with a variance equal to this very complex expression a inverse b a inverse um, a is g prime w g where g is the partial the vector of partial derivatives of the moment conditions so this is very complicated for each of the equations and each of the parameters we have a par partial derivative so it's a matrix actually a vector for each equation and then our weights matrix and then uh, again g0 and for b the term b in the middle it's even more complicated is uh, g naught prime w s naught w g naught now the uh, w is not prime because it's symmetric so it doesn't matter it's a symmetric weighting matrix s naught is the variance of the moment condition so the moment conditions are really random expressions because they um, contain er random error terms for example and so they have a mean and a variance just like everything else and the mean of the moment conditions by definition is zero and the variance depends on the data generating process or the DGP so the variance contains things such as heteroscedasticity or spatial autocorrelation etc and and can be quite complex so this is actually a mouthful but it's a very elegant asymptotic result namely that for any weights matrix any weighting matrix I should say we obtain this asymptotic normality and a variance now we can be clever about the choice of the weight matrix and particularly looking at expression B if we set W to S inverse then we see that the first two terms W times S cancel out and we're left with a much simpler expression G prime S inverse G and A is then also G prime S inverse G and so this um, is a so-called optimal weighting matrix which minimizes the asymptotic variance uh, we set the weighting matrix to the inverse of the variance of the moment equations of course we don't know what this variance is that is the problem this variance is a function of the parameters as well as all the randomness that we have specified in the error term so it's not that obvious how we get this um, S inverse but when we do get it we have an expression that simplifies the expression for the asymptotic variance of the GMM estimator 1 over n this is a scaling factor needed for uh, consistency and then g prime s inverse g and the whole thing inverted so this requires g 
uh, we know is a partial derivative and we evaluate it at the value of the parameters and S inverse we have to in estimate. So how do we do this in practice? We've already seen some examples of this. We actually carry out a two-step procedure. In the first step, uh, as we mentioned, the GMM estimator is consistent for any choice of the weighting matrix, including the equal weights or the identity matrix. So then we don't have to worry about all this uh, complex stuff, and we can obtain a consistent estimate of theta in the first step. Then we plug this estimate into S to get the optimal weighting matrix, S inverse, and then we carry out the optimization using S inverse as the weighting matrix. And we have the um, still, in the second step, a consistent estimate, because it's consistent for any weighting matrix, but it also has the best variance, the smallest variance, as we saw 1 over n, g prime S inverse g inverted. So that's the principle of a general method of moments estimator in very general terms. So every different problem will have its different set of H equations and will have a different matrix S and S inverse. So what does this mean then specifically in, in a regression context? So basically we have the whole framework already except that we don't have our moment conditions. And the moment conditions in general in a regression context will be the moment, the orthogonality between the uh, instrumental variables, the Q, and the error term, the Y minus Z prime theta. So the parameter enters in the error term in, in the theta, and the instruments enter in the Q. And so again, we can write this by definition in expected value, then we operationalize this by taking um, averages over the sample of all these equations. And in a GMM estimation, we carry out a weighted um, least squares optimization. So the weighted, uh, the weighting matrix is W in general. And the solution to this can be expressed analytically. It's a very complicated expression. However, with the optimal weighting matrix, the variance simplifies quite a bit, and we know already in principle how to do this. We know that we should set W to S inverse, and then we get the optimal GMM result. So the weighting matrix is S inverse. This doesn't really change anything to the expression of the estimator itself which looks a lot like a weighted two-stage least squares type of estimator um, with the endogenous and exogenous variables in Z and the instruments in Q. And then S inverse is an estimate of the um, variance-covariance matrix of the moment conditions, which of course has everything to do with the error terms and what we assume for the error terms. Again, this is implemented operationally as a two-step estimator. We start by just a straightforward uh, two-stage least squares, basically, where the weighting matrix is set to the identity matrix, so equal weights. Then using these estimates, we plug them into the inverse for S, which reflects heteroscedasticity and spatial structure and anything else we want to put in there. And then in the second step, we carry out the weighted optimization again, but now with the actual weights. So GMM is very complex, very elegant, very powerful method that um, establishes consistency as uh, by solving the moment conditions. And it's specific to the case where we have more moment conditions than parameters. So it boils down to some sort of a weighted least squares optimization where we have to choose the weights. And we can choose the weights optimally by setting them to the inverse of the variance covariance matrix of the moment conditions.
And in practice, then, any GMM estimation consists of two steps. The first step is an unweighted optimization, typically a form of two-stage least squares, which yields consistent estimates for the parameters. Then we use these consistent estimates to get a consistent estimate for the weighting matrix S inverse, the uh, inverse of the variance of the moment conditions, and we carry out the second step as a weighted least squares minimization. So that's the principle of GMM.